Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here, Monday now, the 24th of June, 2024. On the update today, we're going to take a look at the deep tropics, the tropical Atlantic, now starting to show some signs that it might be coming to life. Pretty vigorous tropical wave. We'll take a look at that, what the models are showing with it, what to look for, that kind of thing. So if you're playing along at home, tracking the tropics, you'll look at some of the same things that I do. And we'll take a gander at the sea surface temperature anomalies and uh, the actual temperatures in the Gulf and the Western Atlantic, and just kind of setting the stage here as we move ahead through the rest of this week. Got the hotel room as my background today. I'm on the road again, and I'll explain what that's all about as we wrap up today's update. All right, thanks for tuning in. Let's see what we've got. First, sea surface temperature anomalies for today, or yesterday, it's always a day behind. Uh, very warm C-shape there, horseshoe shape, whatever you want to call it. There is the absence of El Nino. It's not quite a La Nina, but it's definitely not an El Nino. And I bring this up because I wanted to show you what things were like exactly a year ago. Now, you could argue that last year this looked warmer overall than what we are seeing this year. In fact, we can compare and contrast just by clicking on the different tabs. But the one absolutely pivotal change is the absence of this heat right through here in 2024. This right here is huge, and the overall anomalies have shifted west uh, enough here. You can see this is where we are in 2024. This is where we were in 2023. It was more the northeast Atlantic that was just ridiculously warm. This is your more classic horseshoe shape, warm anomalies right in the heart of the Atlantic tropical area, the far northern Atlantic. I mean, that's what you look for. And I just thought it was interesting as I was taking a look at everything to prepare for today's update. Hey, what were things like a year ago? And I'm telling you, that El Nino, it was raging this time last year all the way across the equatorial Pacific. And while we did have the very warm tropical Atlantic, this really helped to compete with that, and it kept the numbers and the intensities, and the tracks were different. I think this year we're getting ready to see, as we get into July, what the 2024 hurricane season is going to be all about. And I'll explain that further as we move along. So actual sea surface temperatures, I love these different gradients and the color scale that they use. And then these lines here, these isotherms, lines of equal temperature, help to delineate different areas like 29 Celsius is the prominent one right now and then on the inside of that you get warmer close to 30 Celsius elsewhere and that would be the case in some of the shallow water close to Florida close to the Texas and Louisiana coasts and then down in the southwest Gulf of Mexico Bay of Campeche without any disturbances coming through over the coming days the Gulf will start to warm up again after all that shenanigans I guess is a good way to call it with uh, 92, what was it? Um, yeah, 90, well, we had 90L first over here, and uh, then we had 93L that went over here. Uh, where was 91? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. But there's been a lot of weather in the Gulf to churn things up and kind of take the edge off a little bit. But make no mistake, it'll warm right back up. Finally, water temperatures along the southeast coast, really south of Norfolk here, uh, nice and toasty, 26, 27 Celsius, so low 80s. And then the Pamlico Sound in here, definitely nice and warm, probably about 81, 82. And then look right there in the Gulf Stream, there's a little area of 29 Celsius showing up. And uh, it doesn't really matter much right now, but the Western Atlantic starting to warm, and it'll continue to do so, of course. There's a lag, you know, you get the longest day of the year a couple days ago with the summer solstice, but it's like turning off a giant stove. It just takes a while for that to cool back down. And the sun does the same kind of thing, even though we are past the longest days of the year. That incoming solar radiation is still happening, and it takes a while for the ocean to warm up. And by the time we get to August, we'll be at our peak temperatures probably into September. And that, of course, coincides with the peak of the hurricane season, right? So if you're headed down to the beach over the next few days, uh, like I said, really from Norfolk, Virginia, south, looking pretty good. Points north, water temperatures in the low 70s. No thank you. 
I mean, if it's 100 degrees outside, I guess that feels pretty good. Anyhow, tropical um, Atlantic, Gulf Caribbean, all that nice and quiet right now. Same thing in the eastern Pacific, nothing seen over the next several days. But let's take a look at this tweet here from our friend Dylan over in Dallas. Uh, tropical wave east of the Lesser Antilles is impressive. It jumps off the screen on satellite. I mean, anybody can see it down there, right? I don't expect this to do much over the next few days, he says, but it's worth keeping an eye on as it moves into, and this is where it's important, the climatologically favored Northwest Caribbean next weekend. So this wave here, let's use yellow to kind of outline it. There it is right there. And it'll be moving into the vicinity of the southern islands here, the Windward Islands, so Trinidad, Tobago, and elsewhere, even northeastern South America. Uh, was that Venezuela down there? you got to watch this. Maybe, eventually, the ABC Islands. We'll have to see about that. And we'll look at that when we take a look at the model guidance. But that is pretty impressive, and we can see it on the broader picture here uh, from the Tropical Tidbit site. Let me refresh this to make sure we do have the latest animation. Very prominently, I mean, come on, there it is. Very easy to see, but you can also clearly see all of this stable, dry, dusty air to the north. That's the Saharan air layer, and you can tell that it's dry and stable just by the cloud cover through here, this cumulus field. No thunderstorms in there. Your thunderstorms are all down here. This is where the air mass is more moist and unstable, and the Saharan air layer or the sal is just far enough away to not impede this from developing some limited deep convection down there. And then we've got another one coming off over here, tropical wave time. We'll have to watch these now as we close out June and get into July. And again, we'll look at that further as we get into the modeling in just a moment. A little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity here in parts of the Bahamas, probably a surface trough or something down there, nothing showing up on the model guidance is wanting to develop out of that anything further than what it is now. In fact, you can see it on the vorticity signature right there. A little bit showing up, but that, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I look for right there. That is the signature of bundling energy. And look how far south it is. There's 10 degrees latitude right through there. So it is at a fairly low latitude. I would even say very low latitude. And it's going to have to gain some latitude, or it's just going to run right into South America. But it should do that. It should gain some latitude and then work its way, as Dylan mentioned, into the Northwest Caribbean Sea. So maybe Jamaica, our friends in the Cayman Islands, potentially the Yucatan, many days out. But that's why we have these tools. We can watch this stuff as it happens, the observation part, and then we can see what the numerical models are predicting down the road. So let's use black here to make this pop. There's our system right there, tropical wave, south of this very stout ridge of high pressure. Very typical here, pretty brisk trades for this time of year. Everything is pretty much climatologically where it should be. But that is a pretty well amped up wave. So let's see what happens with it over the next several days. And then what I'm going to do is just shift this domain over to the uh, Western Atlantic. I appreciate Dr. Cowan coding up these pages so we can do this and really show you guys what we're looking for. So let's back it up just a little bit so I can show you where that wave is at the initial position right here. There it is down there in the right-hand corner of the frame. And then watch as we go forward. It moves along and all that energy does eventually spread into northeast parts of South America, Trinidad, Tobago, so the southern windward islands. And uh, eventually that energy does get its way into the central Caribbean and south of Jamaica. Are you following? Right there. There it is. Not much to it. Certainly, this is about 60 hours out. But then as it gets into the western Caribbean, some energy still comes around. Looks like that <clears throat> gyre is trying to come back. And it tries to amplify just a little bit. And make no mistake, yes, it's going to head into the Bay of Campeche. Why? Well, the ridging up here is just very strong right now, and that's not going to allow anything to gain much latitude and get into the Gulf of Mexico. Not right now. It's just too early, typically. So that takes us out to about 150 hours 
There's one week out. Something to watch. So there it is, its origins. It goes through the Caribbean, and we'll see what happens with it as we go through time. Now look, this is what it looks like on the moisture side of things. All of this brown through here, that's your dry air. This is very low relative humidity, and the green, of course, would be your higher relative humidity values. And let's use yellow here again. There's the tropical wave. Watch as it moves through. There it goes. Yeah, it does bring an increase in moisture and maybe a low pressure area with it as it gets towards the Bay of Campeche eventually. But notice, too, that there's just more and more of that energy coming off Africa, going across the deep tropics. And as we get into July, we're going to have to really watch how all of that evolves. Every once in a while, the GFS likes to pop a low, a surface low. 10, 14 millibars, certainly not that impressive. But we're getting there. We're getting closer to having to really watch these areas because the Atlantic is generally very favorable right now because of what I showed you at the beginning, the very warm sea surface temperatures, the lower than normal sea level pressure, all that stuff, all those different parameters slowly starting to take shape. And there are a lot of signals that as we get into July, the deep tropics could start to come to life even more. So we're going to watch this going to want to watch this pretty close as we end the month and get into the second month of hurricane season. But for now, anyway, nothing alarming, nothing to worry about or anything like that. It's not going to ruin any beach plans or whatever. But these tropical waves are there, and the first impacts, and that is the key to all of this, will be for our friends down in the Windward Islands as that wave passage occurs over the next day or so. So just be aware of it down there. I know we get a lot of viewers in Trinidad and Tobago and elsewhere in the Windwards. We appreciate it. And uh, just keep an eye on it. Barbados, too, right? i got to go down there someday. I'm going to the Cayman Islands on July 15th. I'll talk about that more later. But, um, yeah, i got to get to some of these islands uh, when time permits. Speaking of time permitting, the time of uh, the first season, the first year of the Hale Project is coming to an end that is why I'm in the hotel room here in Parker, Colorado. The Tacoma, our crowdfunded Toyota Tacoma, uh, the hurricane vehicle. Remember, we used to have a Chevy Tahoe, and we have switched over, switched brands. Now we, the, the community and I have agreed a couple years ago now, I think it was almost three years ago, we're going to get a Tacoma, and we'll use it for winter storms, hurricanes, and now we're going to beat it up to some extent with hail. We've got this huge hail guard up on top of it. Been out here since the end of April with different colleagues, collecting, studying, understanding everything, being frustrated, seeing people get five-inch hailstones or bigger, but not me. Yeah, it's very interesting. And once I do wrap everything up and get back to North Carolina with the vehicle many days down the road here, uh, I'm going to do a special hail project podcast update, whatever, get some of the people that worked with me in as guests, and kind of go over everything that I learned. But that's why I'm out here. I'm in Parker, which is near Denver. Somebody's moving furniture or something. Um, and uh, to get the vehicle and eventually make my way back. But it is still severe weather season, clearly. And the day one outlook, I'll probably get a little bit of action over here today. That's where I'll be headed. Uh, Colby, Hayes, eventually uh, somewhere around there later today. Um, the hail threat, not very high, certainly. Doesn't even reach down into Kansas. In fact, there's a bigger hail threat back home than where I will be. But you never know. I mean, in the thunderstorms could be pretty to look at, whatever, photogenic. That's fine. But tomorrow, a little bit better chance, all of Kansas there for the most part anyway. In the marginal, the hail pr probabilities do go up to uh, paltry 5%. But I will probably make my way over into this area. And, of course, there's all that terrible flooding going on up here. We'll have to see how that impacts things. Or if I get near that, maybe could document that a little bit, put the drone up and see what that's all about. Just a lot of rain in that area of the country and a lot of people displaced. Big insurance costs for those that are insured and for those that are not. It's just going to be a huge loss. I'll tell you, the weather, it's just always coming at us, isn't it? And then finally, day three, um, I'll hang around here in the plains and see what happens with this marginal. Maybe there gets to be a slight introduced in there. It's about 
the most you can hope for if you're a severe weather enthusiast this time of year. You don't have the organized violent tornado stuff, which is a great thing. Believe me. I'm sure you guys have seen about the Greenfield tornado, uh, now possibly the strongest tornado ever observed with the Doppler on wheels radar um, several weeks back. None of that this time of year to that extent, hopefully. You never know, right? So anyway, that's why I'm out here wrapping up the Hale Project. I'll be out here for a few days looking for my one more chance to get maybe baseball-sized hail somewhere. We'll see. It's harder and harder to do. However, the biggest hailstone ever was in Vivian, South Dakota in July of 2008. July. All right, so can't hang out here till July. I got to get home. Got a lot of work to do and prep for the rest of hurricane season, you know, August, September, October. So I do have to get back eventually. All right, so there you go. Let me get back on here to say my goodbyes, at least for now. Um, so that's it. That's a look at what's happening in the tropics as we start the week off. Again, nothing major, no big problems coming, but a few things to keep an eye on as the tropical Atlantic starts to get a little bit more interesting as we round out the month of June. I will be doing these updates every morning. I do have the laptop with me, so why not? I'm not going to get lazy out here. We're going to keep looking at things, so yeah, I'll have an update for you every morning before, before I hit the road on that last hunt for the big hailstone that I'm looking for. I want to try to see if I can get a golf ball or at least baseball. That'd be great. I mean, we'll see. All right. Uh, from all of us at Hurricane Track, the big community we got here, we appreciate you tuning in. I know I do. Have a good rest of your Monday, a good rest of your week. I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.